I'm doing a... You might notice it's been a couple of weeks since I've really done a good video and I've had a lot going on, so we'll leave it at that, at least for now. I have noticed something that's really keen. It's a funny thing. Sometimes you live life and you live a life where the things that you need just pop up and the information that you need will just hit you in the face. You know, it's amazing. I've been living that life for the last couple of weeks. And here is a little something that's occurred to me. My father always said a good relationship of any sort, be it business, romantic or otherwise, is about communication or even just social. And... I see people starting networking sites like Facebook and, well, Facebook wasn't started for communication. It was actually started as a NSA information harvesting operation. It's done quite well. Congratulations, guys. You get the Orwell Award, the one depicting a boot stamping on the human face for all eternity. I suppose something the stand-up philosopher, uh, Mr. O'Brien, I've been known as Celtic Hero 9 here on YouTube has said a lot is respect and service are the critical keys to having a coherent society. And I would actually say that you can't properly serve somebody if you don't respect them. Now, how do you respect somebody? Well, that's as diverse as you know, the colours in the rainbow. No pun intended. And I really find that there's this little glitch. There's this little glitch that human beings have. We like to think that other people think like us. And more importantly, that they feel like us when it comes to certain matters. It is my belief, and this is strictly my opinion, that our life, our history, teaches us that this is not so. And it will often take our entire lives to realize that this is not so. There are many lines that we draw for ourselves that are not necessary. And there are some that are. And there are some that are temporary yet again. And some we draw deliberately to be broken. Recently, I'm not going to give the details, however, recently I have found myself in a situation where I was drawing lines and someone else had trouble seeing the importance of why I was saying what I was saying. And the word that came into my head to best characterize their eagerness, not in a bad way, just eagerness and enthusiasm was that they were trying to herd me. Now, I've seen this in a few situations. Salesmen use it sometimes to get people towards a sale. Uh, politicians use it pretty much for the same reason. I mean, every uh, political promise is a sales pitch. As somebody who used to work in sales and was glad I'm out, frankly, I know the difference. So... I really, I like this individual, I've got to tell you. I just don't want to be herded. And when somebody says that they are willing to go so far and up until a point, yes, you have every right to say, really? Okay, well, if you feel that way, do you mind if I ask? why you don't want to go any further. 
They're entitled to ask. Now, you are under no obligation whatsoever to answer them. Let's make that clear. It is polite to give them some sort of explanation. I'm not great at explaining myself. I make that completely known. Other things I can explain, other things I take a great pride in being able to simplify down to about one or two sentences. There are some things about myself that I have real trouble distilling. Not for want of intellectual capacity. It is rather for want of emotional fortitude, if you can understand where I'm coming from with that. I have a very... What's the word? Litigious, I suppose, would be... Or legalistic might be a better word. Mindset. That is, I have a mind that says, go there, do this think these things and keep yourself frosty as the uh, American Marine Corps and a few other services have a habit of saying in America scratch that whole last sentence as a number of armed services in the United States of America have a habit of saying so when somebody says to me How do you feel about me? Chances are I'll be devastatingly honest. And if that means it's not everything they'd hoped for, or it's something they might find vaguely offensive relative to the expected result of any or any lack of effort or absence of tampering they've put in, it can offend them. I'd rather be honest than I would be tactful and believe me it's blown up in my face quite a few times and a lot of the times it's blown up in my face jeez I'm starting to sound like mind pedals here uh, a lot of the times it's blown up in my face have been times where I haven't set up my boundaries my guidelines or there wasn't time to really set them up And in some rare instances, people don't notice or they're blinded by other things that they're doing. There's an old uh, saying out of the Muslim world, does the light of God guide you or blind you? I mean, is it showing what you're walking on or is it getting in your eyes? And if it's getting in your eyes, you could walk off a cliff. Conversely, the opposite is also true. Also, uh, another saying from their region. Unending steps in darkness can cause even the most righteous man to falter. We all need to communicate, and we all need to respect that communication. When we don't, everything breaks down. It breaks down in two ways. Either you're communicating and no one respects it, so it's as if you said nothing at all, or you respect people, or you just respect yourself, and you don't communicate anything, you're going to walk into other people's walls, and you're going to get hurt. If you walk into a wall, you get hurt. So, if you know what I'm saying. The problem is, when we want to when we desperately, desperately want the end of a sentence to be what we want it to be, our minds have an unending and, frankly, devastating capacity to make the, what should be very clear, m maddeningly ambiguous. Well, they said that, yet do they really mean that? Might they be being subtle? in some way that I'm missing. 
am I really getting the message? Now, that's something I hate about radical feminists. It's how they undermine society. They were like, well, we know what that really means. And in some cases, yes, they were right. There was sexism in a few things that we didn't anticipate or hadn't really thought about it. However, they also demolished a bunch of really solid things without giving it a proper replacement. Uh, yeah. By making people over-question something that's pretty much harmless. Or is it unintentionally sexist and should be replaced with something better. So, I'm just checking what the time is, sorry. Yeah. This is just a nice little annoyed at myself rant. And I'm subjecting you to it. Hey, congratulations if you've stuck with me this far. Anyway, I hope this has worked out for everybody, and I hope it's given everyone a bit of insight. We've all got to listen to what other people say, and when somebody puts up a boundary, you have every right to question it. You've just got to know the difference between one you should challenge for a good reason, and one that you're challenging for purely selfish reasons that ultimately don't benefit anyone else. If you have an impaired perception of reality, or you're desperate to fill a void, you can't even trust yourself to do either one of those accurately. Anyway, Mosey Griffin, thanks very much for your time.